Let's start this week off the right way, talking about OTC and penny stocks. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it's Monday, August 7th. Now, we're going to do the same thing we always do on this show. We're going to focus in on penny stocks that have heat. We're looking at stocks under 5 bucks on any market that have potential to put money in our pockets. We call these hot penny stocks, and I do my research looking for hot penny stocks by going to the charts first. I don't pay a lot of heed to the press releases of the filings until I find a chart that has heat. I've seen a lot of big, hot news fall flat on its face because the chart had no temptation, no heat. So I'm looking for a chart that has temptation. I'm looking for volume coming in or a breakout setup or even a lot of big bounces back to back. Something that says I'm ready to run. Then I'll go through all those press releases and filings looking for a match to set that chart on fire. These are the sort of stocks I'm looking for every day to share with you. And I got three of them to share with you right now. First one we're taking a look at is ticker AGRI, Agroforest Growing Systems. A brilliant chart, ready to run. This is an atypical breakout chart, one of my favorites. 200 day SMA coming down fast and furious, leveling off. Price was way under the 200, but now gets close and looks like it's about ready to jump on that 200 and skyrocket. AGRI has current news. It's good news. It's not super mega big news, but you don't need that when you have a hot chart. You just need momentum, and we've got that going on. So ticker AGRI, she finished the day at roughly 15.5 cents with 19% gains. She's a penny stock on the NASDAQ. That means you can trade her for free. You can trade her pre-market, after-market. Lots of benefits with these major exchange penny stocks. So we do have a description. We find it over here in one of their press releases. Agroforest Growing Systems is an ag tech company focused on building an integrated ag tech platform that combines the best technology, intellectual property, and knowledge to solve an urgent problem, providing the best solutions to help drive sustainable crops and nutritious food for people around the world. The Agroforest vision is to be a global leader in developing plant-based foods and products through an advanced and sustainable ag tech platform that makes positive change in the world from seed to table. So the company has a bunch of greenhouses and they produce organically grown produce. They also source a lot of organically grown produce. And I don't know how many companies they've got deals with, a lot. You're gonna see in the news, they're still making deals. And they are taking this organic produce and they are creating food products that are better than their original state. So the relative volume around the company today, nice jump, going from 3.2 million to 82.1 million. That is huge. Share structure for AGRI, I don't know what the float is. All they tell us is the outstanding share count, which is only 18.5 million. You can't have a float any higher than the outstanding share count. So that's going to be a decent float, whatever it is. Looking at those financials, we're not going to find anything. They have nothing annually and they have nothing quarterly. Now, this is a bit surprising considering she's on the NASDAQ. But I've been looking at the news. They now have products. They've got packaging. I haven't read any distribution deals, but I've got to figure that's right around the corner as well. So we're looking at the company in a transition right now. And on the NASDAQ, that's a big deal. They're going to go from no revenues to having revenues. And that can catch the investor's attention in a very big way. Looking at the disclosures for the company, we've got a few form fours here in July and August. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's stock. And they can do that in a lot of ways, including buying and selling. These happen to be sales. None of them are big. They're all real small sales. I've got to figure management's going through hard times just like we are, and they've got to pay the bills too. We've got a financial that came out August 4th. That's going to have all the current and historical information about this company. So if you really are interested in them, forget about doing a search on Google. Just jump into the most recent financial. You'll get everything you're looking for. Then we have a pre-14A. A pre-14A announces a shareholders meeting. They're going to have one September 27th of this year. One of the proposals they're going to vote on is a reverse split between 1 in 15 to 1 in 50. Now they could vote it down and it not happen. 
but most of all the reverse splits being voted on are happening because the market is down. So this is gonna happen over a month from now, so we've got time to make our play. But if you like the stock, you're thinking about hanging around for a while, you've had a heads up of what they've got on the board. Let's take a look at that news now. I've only gone back here to June 7th. There's little news over and over with all these companies they're making deals with. Here was another one. The company forms a joint venture with Agrigrata, a premier agricultural and agro-industrial consulting company. This is a company that's going to help them make all the different types of deals that they want. Then we've got a piece of news halfway through July. The company gives us an update on the acquisition of Berry People LLC. This is a premier berry distributor. They want to close this deal. They had planned on having it closed by now, but they need some more due diligence, some more vetting, but they say it's still on the books. It's still supposed to happen. Then we've got two pieces of news I do want to bounce into quickly. One came out uh, the second, third week of July, and one came out the first week of August. Looking at that first piece of news, this came out July 24th. AgriForest Growing Systems, an ag tech company focused on advancing sustainable cultivation of plant-based products, today provided a business update following the recent restructuring of management. We remain committed to pursuing business opportunities that drive organic growth, positive cash flow, and value for our shareholders. To assist with our growth strategy, we are relocating our resources to focus on the commercialization of our products and are analyzing the food verticals best suited for our intellectual property. We are well positioned to execute on our business growth initiatives and drive near-term revenue for Unthink Foods and monetization of our patented grow house. Importantly, we have reduced our average monthly operating cash burn by approximately 31% since year end and continue to explore areas where we can remove non-essential expenses. Finally, we are working to complete our previously announced acquisitions and are progressing through the due diligence. That other piece of news just came out a couple of days ago. AgriForce provides update on Unthink Awakened Flower Nutritional Advantages. This is one of their better products. Independent lab results confirm Unthink, awakened flower nutritional advantage with over five times the fiber and twice the protein and 77 less net carbs than regular all-purpose flour. And we really don't have to read anything else. That's one of their products right there. So the company's got better food products. They are dealing in a hot industry and they're right on the transition of making money. It is all about the chart. It's nice to have a big hot catalyst, but as long as you've got momentum, as long as you've got things going forward, you normally get a good jump on these charts. Speaking of charts, let's go take a look at it. Let's do some charting. We're over here at my free trading platform, Think or Swim. You get this when you sign up with TD Ameritrade, and that's free too. So we are looking at AgriForest Growing Systems, ticker AGRI. That's a six-month, four-hour view with the high bubble hitting in January of $1.73 and falling from that point all the way to a low of $0.11, cents, hitting on August 3rd. Now that is a perfect atypical breakout chart. You've got your 200-day SMA falling fast and furious, price way down underneath it. Then she starts to get close and your price starts to jump towards it, showing that she has eagerness to climb. And what I look for is what we've got here, a piercing. I look for one green bar to jump and pierce the 200 going up and then come right back down to where it started. I don't want to see it come down any lower. It can come down higher, but not any lower. That is a perfect indicator to me. Now, I know she's ready to run and she can't run yet because the 200 is not flat enough. It's still too steep. We've got lots of volume today and the volume has been growing over the last five or six days. Oscillators are strong, but they've got some weakness because we had some pullback on the back half of the day. But they are looking good, except the RSI. She's down there at 53 and I don't like to see the RSI anywhere under 55. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Now there's a great example. There's your 200 day SMA coming down hard and right now she's flat. That's what you want. 
So we had a break out here over the 200, but she was still too steep. So when it came back down, she slipped and she fell. So she didn't just come back to where she started. She fell down and that's when she hit this low bubble. Off of that low bubble, she methodically and slowly worked her way over to the 200. Once she got to that 200, she exploded. Bars got big and she took off, jumping here from about uh, 13 cents up to 24 cents. She did come all the way back down. We hate to see that, but she's still on top of the 200. She stopped on the 50. So she's on top of the 200 here and on the four hour chart, she's right up underneath the 200. These are perfect placements. Now the oscillators on the one hour chart suck. All that downfall right there has sucked all of these down as well. Looking at that five day, five minute view, lots of volatility. Had a big bounce here at the end of the day, even jumped pre-market the next day and then fell for a couple days, hitting that low bubble. But look how she wanted to get over that 200. Look at how big that bar is. She jumped and pushed herself way up to make absolutely sure she did not come back down. And she's floating over the 200. She didn't want to get anywhere near it. And then yesterday she took off and today she just continued pre-market. She hit that high of 24. And after that, she's had a fall. Now she has come down through her 200 on the five day, five minute chart. But I'm not real worried about that one. I'm putting precedent on the one hour and the four hour chart. This does not look great. The five minute chart looks pretty pathetic. Price is falling all day. It's underneath every single SMM, SMA, and all of our oscillators are either planted or pushing down. I still think it's worth a watch though. The four hour chart is what caught my attention. The one hour chart looks strong. Five hour chart, she had a bad day, but there's a lot of volatility in this stock. So she could have a good day tomorrow. A-G-R-I. Put it on your watch list. If it pops, well, you can thank me later. So you ready for the next one? You need a break? You want to grab a soda? No? All right. This is Palatin Technologies, ticker PTN. This is a hot penny stock on the New York Stock Exchange. Same benefits as the NASDAQ. Free to trade, can trade pre-market, aftermarket. God, I love these major exchange penny stocks. Now, PTN's got an excellent chart. It's just like the last one. It's an atypical breakout chart, except she's already breaking out. She started it today. There was a huge amount of volume that came in. I haven't even peaked. I don't know how much it was, but looking at the bar, it was huge, relatively speaking. And she is now pushing up. She just had news come out today about a deal she's making, a collaboration that's going to bring in some strong revenue. So everything is set up perfectly. PTN, she finished today at $2.44 with virtually 24% gains. Now, what does PTN do? Well, they're a biotech. Palatin is a biopharmaceutical company developing first-in-class medicines based on molecules that modulate the activity of the melanchorton receptor systems with targeted receptor-specific product candidates for the treatment of diseases with significant unmet needs and commercial potential. Palatin's strategy is to develop products, then form marketing collaborations with industry leaders to maximize their commercial potential. And that's exactly what we're looking at today. The company has one federally approved drug that they can sell and they made a deal today and it's going to make them a lot of money, this deal. The other drugs they've got are all in the pipeline and work in their way to being federally approved. They have two drugs in the phase two trial. One is for diabetes, one is for ulcers. They have another one for retinal diseases. This is in preclinical trials. That's the very start of it. That's got a long ways to go. And then we've got the dry eye disease drug, which is completing its phase three trial, the very end. This is where everybody gets excited. And we're expecting that data to come out the second half of 2023, which is any time now. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, that's a nice jump. No, they're not big numbers, but that's over 14 times her normal volume, going from 50,000 to 716,000. Share structure for the company. Well, I don't know what the float is, but it can't be any higher than 11.5 million. 
Woo! We got ourselves virtually a low float. I'm liking that. Let's take a look at those financials. Whoa! Something strange happened four years ago. I don't know if this is for this company or maybe they did a reverse takeover a while ago. I haven't done a deep dive. But this is definitely something dying and dead and something new coming from it. They were at $60 million in 2019. We know it's millions because of those three zeros we got to put on any of the numbers. And in one year, it dropped to 117000 And then in another year, it was in debt 188000 I think this is gone, buried. <laughs> now we have something new, 1.4 million at the end of the fiscal year of 2022 with a good profit margin. They got to keep 1.2 million. Looking at the quarterly, oh, dynamite. Every quarter is bigger than the one before it. Starting a year ago in March of 2022 at 216,000, jumping to 770, 869. Cresting a million, and this first quarter of 2023, they did 1.2 million. And though you don't see it here, the other quarterly report is now out, and they tell us here they did $4.1 million. And they're making their money by selling their only federally approved drug, Vilesi. And we're going to talk more about that because it's in the news. So that's a huge jump from 1.2 million to 4.1 million. And the news is about Vilesi going into a big open market for it. Looking at the disclosures for the company. Got lots of them here. All these Form 4s. Remember, Form 4s are when the management acquire or dispose of shares. Well, they didn't buy them or sell them here, but they did acquire them. Every person in there got 10,000 shares. I don't know what for. Then we got an 8K announcing them going to a conference. One of the 8Ks was the financial I just shared with you. The other 8K is about the news I'm going to share with you. So they tell us here back in May, they were presenting some preclinical data about their diabetic drug. They also tell us that they have increased their revenues because of Vilesi. And then here, the news that came out today. Palatine announces direct-to-consumer telehealth partnership with Upscript Health for Vilesi. The company has entered into a strategic partnership with Upscript Health, a leading direct-to-consumer telemedicine company providing telemedicine services to pharmaceutical and medical technology companies. Upscript Health will make Vilesi available to hundreds of thousands of patients in its proprietary women's telehealth platform. Vilesi is the first and only as-needed treatment approved by the FDA for premenopausal women with acquired generalized hyperactive sexual desire disorder. Palatin is the actively seeking Vilesi collaborations for the United States and for territories outside the currently licensed territories of China and South Korea. So it's already over there big time. Vilesi is licensed to Forsome Pharma in China and Kwaodong Pharmaceuticals in South Korea. So now they're looking to get out of those areas and spread it to the rest of the world. So they've got a very huge market and it is exclusively theirs. So let's go take a look at this chart. She's already breaking out because of that news right there. She got the surge 14 times the normal volume. No, it wasn't a big number, 750,000 shares, but did it push the charts? Like I said, it's an atypical breakout chart. This is Palatin Technologies, ticker PTN, six-month, four-hour view. It was in January. She hit a high here of $5 when she had this humongous run from her 52-week low right there to this high of $5. But there was no way she was going to continue running past the 200. That is way too steep. It would just take something extraordinary to get it to do that. So she tripped and fell underneath the 200, down to a low bubble here of $1.82, which she hit at the very end of July. Now, as you can see, this 52-week low got broke. That's what started this. She came underneath the 52-week low, hitting this $1.82. She bounced up. She got up on top of her 50, 
but looked like she was losing enthusiasm. She came back down to the old 52-week low and looks like she may have kept falling, except that news came out and she blasted off from $1.99, hitting a high here of $2.70, falling back to $2.44, and I think she's at about $2.50 right now. As you can see, the volume was intense today compared to all the days before, and all of the oscillators are on fire. Every single one of them has just exploded and are pushing up right now. Our one hour, 20 day view. So there's your fall right there. She was stuck to the 200. She fell down to that 52 week low and then slipped. I don't know what caused it, but she fell down here, bounced back up, came right back to the 200 and started to slip. And I think she'd have probably slipped further. She was underneath that old 52 week low support. But she found the news and that pushed her way up there. We are getting aftermarket activity and it's positive. She is still climbing on top of her nine day SMA. And we just had two golden crosses, the 50 day and the 20 day. There's a lot of power sitting up underneath that price right now. And our oscillators are looking great. PPO is pushing up, ADX is pushing up, MACD is pushing up. Look, if all your oscillators are pushing up, it doesn't matter what they are. Up is always good for any of them. As long as they're going up, we're in good shape. Looking at our five-day, five-minute view. So there's your 52-week low from way back, and there's our brand new one in here. She got up on top of that, bounced off of it, and took a leap off of that 52 week low up to that new high of $2.70 and she fell back to her 50 day SMA. She came under it a little bit like a rubber ball, came back up on the surface and now she's pushed away from the 50 sitting on her nine day SMA. Oscillators say she's growing. PPO is going up, MACD is going up. Only thing pulling down at this very moment, wow, well, I just seen it move. <laughs> The RSI is falling a little bit, but I just seen movement. So there is still activity going on right now. I think PTN is going to climb, folks. So I put it on your watch list. Just a feeling. Our last penny stock also comes from the NASDAQ. This is Nocera, ticker NCRA. Now let's talk about the chart first. It's not your atypical anything. It's a chart most people would go by. But I saw a habit. Every time she breaks over the 200, she jumps hard. She had a breakout in May. She went over 200%. She had news come out in June. She jumped and she ran from late June to early July, going from about a buck 50 up to $7. Then she fell back up under the 200 and she is running for it right now and she is ready to break out. But here's the problem. This company hasn't got any fresh catalysts. That news that came out in June, that's it. Now, I'm expecting more to come, absolutely. But that was a big move for the company. The stock ran hard because this company, it's a Chinese company working out of Taiwan, is into aquatic culture. Put in simple terms, they're fish farmers. <laughs> but they just don't grow fish. They also set up fish farms for other people. I don't know how many of these they do, but they can do them real fast. In two to three days, they can have your fish farm set up so that you can be growing fresh fish and selling them to stores and restaurants, which is what this company does as well. But they realize they're missing a huge market direct to consumer, and they can get top dollar doing it that way. So that's what the news was all about back in June. They had made a deal, and I think more news is going to come out, but more than that, I'm trusting this chart will follow suit. I think when she breaks to 200, she's going to jump again because it's got a low float. So NCRA, she finished the day at $1.51 and just a little over 4% gains. Now, I've already told you what the company does, so let's take a look at the relative volume. Oh, she dropped a little bit today. Not that she's been doing a lot. She's been at 144,000 shares roughly for the last 30 days. Today, she dropped to 117,000 shares, but still put gains on the table. Share structure for the company. She's got a low float. She had a low float at start one. Outstanding share count is only 9.6 million. Looks like the insiders have roughly half, which leaves us roughly half. So we got about four and a half million in the float. Outstanding. Financials for the company. 
Well, they are making money and they're making more every year from 456,000 up to 14 million at the end of 2022. Looking at their quarterly, uh, it's a little up and down. They were here at uh, about 3 million a year ago, fell down to 1.3, then really jumped at the end of 2022 to 7.6, and now they're back down to 3.8. It's that profit margin. That's why they got to get direct to consumer market. They're going to make more money there. Disclosures for the company. All right. Um, I did go through these. Let me see if I can remember. Primarily, they had been given a notice by NASDAQ that they had failed to meet the director uh, minimum requirement. I don't know exactly what it is, but their directors were messed up and they had to fix them. Well, a bunch of these 8Ks are them playing with their management, getting directors the way they're supposed to be. So they're trying to get that problem fixed. And the other one does relate to the news, even though it's right here in July. They're talking about stuff that happened back in June. So jumping on over to that news, this is the big piece of news. And all the rest of the news is about them working with their directors, trying to get that problem fixed. But I want you to see the news that came out on June 7th. They tell us here that the company is to acquire Zha Zhang Jingzhu Hu Digital Information. I did too pronounce that right. <laughs> Now, this was a correction. They had the wrong purchase price in there. The purchase price was 1.5 million shares of the company stock. That's what they gave them for this company. So they tell us here the acquisition allows the company to enter Du Yin, which is like a Chinese TikTok. It's a video live sales sharing market. The potential will be $14 million monthly general merchandise revenue for fiscal year 2024. The do-in application allows users to create and share videos and merchandise to its subscribers. The do-in hosts many accounts held by famous and upcoming chefs and restaurants who live stream cooking shows to promote themselves and their business and their merchandise. This acquisition is our first step and first platform entering the Duyan video streaming and merchandise sales market. Our goal is to continue to acquire new accounts with 100 million fan base to reach the largest audiences possible and incur the most revenue. Our year-end goal is to acquire 100 chefs and restauranters and 100 Duyan accounts by the end of 2023. They're going to be working hard. These goals will allow us to target general merchandise revenue of $30 million for 2023 and monthly GMV of $14 million for 2024. So this is how they're going to bring it to market. They're going to use their Chinese TikTok over there, their version of it, and they're going to bring their advertisement in front of people and probably use delivery services to get it to them. So they've got plans and they're working on them. For the next six months, five months, they're going to be putting all of this together. So I think this is a hot stock, but I like the charts. Now this is old news. They haven't given us anything since June. So a piece of news coming out right now would be perfect. Let's go take a look at that chart. I know, at first glance, there's not a lot of pizzazz. This is ticker NCRA, Nocera Inc. That's a six-month, four-hour chart. And as you can see, she has been pretty flat. I mean, everything has been flat. The price, the SMAs, you can't even see where the SMAs are at. Now, it was right here in May that she had her first bounce. You can see she was underneath the 200, banging her head on it. Once she got over that 200, I didn't see any news. She took off, lots of volume. She was at $1.13 and went to $2.81. That is 200 and some odd percent gains, over 200. She came back down under the 200. As Soon as she got there, she took another bounce. Now, she did go sideways for a while until that news we just got done reading came out in June, and she started a run. She was here at $1.38 and went clear up to $7.03. Now, you can see she came down hard and fast and right through that $200, hitting a low low here of $1.16. And off of that, she is starting to climb. 
She is working her way across her 50. She has pierced the 200. Remember what I said about piercing it. You want to see it go through and come back no lower than where it started. It didn't. Came down on top of the nine and she has settled right there. She is waiting for an opportunity. Oh my God, please bring out a press release. The oscillators all look good. Everything is working its way up slowly, but you can see there is an incline on all of it. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Oh, I do not like that 200. Look at that big bow down. That is rough. She's actually breaking through it though, but she's sliding on it. She's sliding on that 200. I'd watch the one hour chart here. This is scary. She's rolling down on all of her oscillators as well. Looking at the five day, five minute. <laughs> now that looks good. That's a good chart. Isn't that funny? The four hour look good. The uh, one hour, not so much, but the five minute, five day looks outstanding. She has been pushing up. Our 200 is climbing. Our price is obviously climbing. We had a low of $1.27, hit a high of $1.65. She has been above the 200 all of this time. And just here recently, she's come back down through the 50 day SMA. She has stopped her lower lows. She is now broke even. This could be a floor. She could be turning around like a rubber ball bounce, a ball that goes underwater and then right back up to the surface. She could be doing that. Oscillators are pretty sad right now. They are all falling. But as I said, I am primarily watching this stock because of its habits. When it breaks to 200, it normally pops. It's got a low float. Why not? And if we get lucky, if a news press comes out, oh boy, we could see a huge run here, folks. NCRA for the wild card lottery play. <laughs> Every day I try to bring you hot penny stocks, folks. And I do this by looking at the charts. Are you doing it? Are you practicing? You know what an atypical breakout chart looks like. It's the easiest one to identify. And when that price is close, you know it's getting ready to break out. All you got to do is a little research and check out the press releases and the filings and see if you can find a match. I like getting your interest, folks. I bring you quality plays every day. No, they're not the best of the best. They're not the cream of the crop. God only knows what those are. But I am bringing you hot stocks. But don't stop your due diligence on what I say. I'm just the start. Do your own due diligence. Convince yourself these are good companies. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.